this material is over analyzing graphs. Now we actually did a lot of this material back in the last section when we focused on quadratic functions or parabolas. So we're just going to apply that knowledge from what we learned there and take it into all different types of graphs. Not just degree two functions, but any type of function that we can think of. So the first thing that we need to discuss is increasing, decreasing, and constant. And those all work out exactly the way that you would expect them to. Increasing is when our graph is going up from left to right. Decreasing is when our graph is going down from left to right. And constant is just like a constant term of the polynomial. It stays the same. Hence, the constant part of the graph is when the graph stays the same from left to right. Now, notice all of these definitions say from left to right in the ending part. So we want to make sure that our answers are in that format, from the leftmost point to the rightmost point. So that means our answers are only going to be using x values, because x values are the horizontal values on the graph, the left and the right values. Now, we've learned a couple of different notations that talks about these x values, and you are more than welcome to use either one of them, as long as the homework doesn't specify that you must use this one or you must use that one. I'll be using both of them here to make sure you're comfortable with both of the notations, but on your homework, again, if it doesn't specify, you can use whichever notation you are more comfortable with. So, we've learned about these notations way back in chapter R of the college algebra. So these notations are either interval notation, where we have an interval, our small number, to our large number. And the interval notation can have parentheses around the outside, or they can have the brackets around the outside, or they can have a combination of either or, depending on what we're talking about. Since we're talking about increasing, decreasing, and constant, all of our answers for these will only be intervals, because our intervals are going to be split up by increasing, decreasing, and constant, naturally. So we want to say if we have endpoints of these, our endpoints cannot both be increasing and decreasing at the same time. So we do not include any endpoints in these intervals. And hopefully this makes a little bit more sense when I look over this example here. Or you could also use set builder notation. So set builder, think of Bob the Builder, Bob needs braces. Our set builder notation starts with the braces notation. Then we use x, and we definitely will be using x here because all of our answers are talking about x values or left to right. x, the bar that means such that, and then we put an inequality here. So x is greater than a number, x is smaller than a number, or x is between two numbers, depending on what our situation is. So let's look at this example over here, and we're going to do just exactly as these definitions say. We are going to start from the leftmost part of our graph. We're going to trace the graph at that point and decide, are we increasing, decreasing, or constant? And we're going to take out the interval at that point. So let's start at my leftmost part of this graph, which is negative 5. And if I trace my graph, notice my graph is going up at this interval here. So this is, of course, going to be an increasing part of the graph. It stops increasing at this point right here. So my graph is increasing from my x value of negative 5 to my x value of 1. So if I wanted to do this in interval notation, my increasing would be from negative 5 to 1. And notice again, there are both parentheses. You don't include any endpoints in this section. If you wanted to do this in set builder notation, it would be the set of x's such that my x value is between these two x values that I highlighted here, a negative 5 to 1. I will not do any or equal to bars because I don't, yet again, include any endpoints. All right, let's move on to the next piece of the graph. 
So I start right here, and if I trace my graph, notice it's not moving anywhere, it's going straight horizontal. So at this point, it's constant. It stops being constant at this value right here. So my constant part of the graph goes from one to three. So my interval, which is constant then, starts at one and ends at three. And so that's what my interval notation is. Again, always parentheses. My set builder notation is the set of x's such that my x value is between 1 and 3. Now let me clarify why I don't include any endpoints, why I don't put brackets here, and why I don't put or equal to bars there. So let's just say that hypothetically, I would put a bracket to include this endpoint here. And hypothetically, I would put a bracket around to include this endpoint here. What those brackets are saying then is that at my one endpoint, I am increasing, and at my one endpoint, I am constant. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't know many things that can be increasing and constant at the exact same time. And that's what these brackets were saying here, is that at this point, I'm both increasing and constant um, simultaneously. Now, obviously, that doesn't work. So that's why I cannot include any endpoints. At my point one, specifically, I'm stationary. I'm not increasing, I'm not constant, I'm not decreasing, I'm not moving in any direction. So that's why we do not include any endpoints here. All things for increasing, decreasing, constant will be parentheses or not or equal to like we see here. Okay, moving on to the last part of the graph, starting right here from the leftmost. If I trace my graph, notice it's going down from left to right. That means I'm decreasing on the interval. It starts at my three and it ends at my six. So I'm decreasing from three to six. Or in set builder notation, the set of x's such that x is between three and so hopefully now you understand how to pick out where the graph is increasing, decreasing, constant, how to write it in either interval or set builder notation, and to remember that we don't include any endpoints here. Okay, the other way we can analyze graphs is by looking at maximums and minimums. Of course, we know maximum is a high point on the graph. Minimum is a low point on the graph. So in this homework, we're going to be looking for all different maximums and all different minimums, meaning we are going to be looking for what they call a relative max and min. So we're looking for any high points or any low points. So in this homework, we're going to be looking for all different high points and all different low points. That's what is defined by a relative maximum. Relative maximums and relative minimums are any part of the graph which we see a high or a low point, and if it specifies in the given interval. In this homework, it's just going to say visualized on the graph. There is another thing that's called an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum. That means if you have more than one high point or if you have more than one low point, you want the absolute highest point and the absolute lowest point. Now that might pertain in other homework or that might pertain in applied problems, but in this homework we are focusing on specifically all high points and all low points. Okay. Since we're talking about high and low points, that means we're talking about the vertical part of the graph. So all of our answers here are going to be y values on this graph. Now, some of the homework might also ask for the location. If it asks for the location, meaning where it's happening, we specify that by the x value. But our actual max and our actual min is given by the y values. So let's look at this graph over here. Let's start with any high points. We notice we have a high point on my graph right here. That would give me my maximum. So the highest point on this graph is three. If I had any other high points, I would pick those out as well, which I do not because my graph continues forever in this direction 
and it continues forever in that direction. So my answer here, my high point on the graph is three. If it asks for the location, the location is the x value. So when x is equal to, in this specific problem, negative two. Okay. If we wanted minimums on this graph, we would pick out any and all low points. In this graph, we only have one low point, and that happens over here at our y value of negative one. So my minimum of this is negative one, and if it wants the location, the location is the x value. So specifically here, when x is equal to positive two. And so hopefully now I have clarified how you would pick out any maximums and minimums. The y values on the graph of any place I see a high or a low point. If it asks for location, then we just pick out the corresponding x value. Here's a perfect time to end this video. And in the next video, I'll come back and I'll do some more examples of increasing, decreasing constant, as well as maximums and minimums.